Welcome back, everybody, to Sports Talk on this big Twitter Tuesday. Steve Kaplow, it's with you right now. And as you might imagine, it's El Paso Chihuahua's fever. They're in the postseason in their second year. They're in Fresno right now, getting set to begin a best three out of five series with the Grizzlies that will start up uh, tomorrow. We'll have all the action for you with Tim Haggerty calling it right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. And uh, with us right now on our Village Inn hotline, where all of our guests always appear, is uh, Chihuahua's manager, Jamie Quirk. And first off, uh, I I guess it's been a few weeks since we last spoke when we were upstairs uh, broadcasting prior to uh, one of the home games. But uh, congratulations. You guys have been a huge, huge sports focus in the city. And I'm sure uh, for you and uh, a lot of players on that roster, uh, a pretty crazy last few weeks of the season. Well, it, it really was, and thank you for uh, the congratulations. But, uh, you know, it's really a group of guys, and, and the group changed quite a bit as we went along. You know, you know, guys getting called up to the major leagues and somebody from AA coming up or somebody from the big leagues coming down, and uh, it, they meshed. It's a good group. They, uh, they really just took a day at a time. You know, you kind of hear it all the time in sports, but it's, it's so true. We, you know, we knew the situation we were in, but uh, we just went out and played and not worry about anything else but what we're doing. Uh, good things could happen, and they did happen. And finally, we just wanted to be close. That was kind of our goal, be close when we played Vegas and take our chances head-to-head, and I think we beat them uh, six out of eight when we played them, and that was the difference. You know, there were so many moving parts uh, to this team, especially late, and we've talked a lot about that on the show and when we brought Tim on uh, before every game. Uh, And, Jamie, you know, you look at everybody from Travis Jankowski and and what he meant in that brief period sparking the lineup, and then a guy like Hector Gomez who spent, uh, you know, 66 games with Milwaukee. He comes in and has big hit after big hit. Hunter Renfro gets called up from double-A, and he's clutch. And then the pitching. So, I mean, really it's it's so funny when you talk about a team effort because that's exactly what it is here it wasn't there wasn't one or two people everybody stepped up for you everybody did um you know you we we didn't know uh you know when jankowski comes up i we all knew he was a good player but how would he translate to triple a well he not only translated he wasn't even here very long and when i was in the big leagues hector gomez was a great surprise for us uh the day we got him from Milwaukee, I called uh, Jerry Nair and the bench coach for the Brewers, who's a good friend of mine. I said, "Tell me about Hector. We just we've got him." And he said, uh, "You're going to love him. He brings energy. He's ready to play. He just needs to play." He was sitting on the bench here rotting. We couldn't get him in games. We just there was just no room for him. And he got a chance to come to us, and I put him at shortstop every day, and he hit, kept hitting, and next thing you know, he's hitting. You know, fourth and fifth, he was, he's, he's been fantastic for us. Um, that was a huge plus because that was the time uh, when, he, when, when he came, Pena was hurt. So uh, uh, it it's really has been one guy after another. They've stepped in. Uh, when, when, winning, when winning happens, it's usually a, a, obviously a group, a group of guys, you know, willing to put, their, put it on the line every day. And, and these guys have. Uh, you know, some in some cases at AAA, it's a tough level because, you know, you've either been sent down and you're in a bad mood, and the first thing I ask guys when they get here is, how, you know, how's your mind? Where, where's your mind at? You know, whatever's happened uh, in the past, forget about it. Somebody's always got their eyes on you. There's always somebody watching you. Let's go, you know, and get it done. So uh, we, we've had some guys respond, uh, obviously, and uh, it, uh, it's, been a, it's been a great run. Chihuahua's manager Jamie Quirk with us uh, here on Sports Talk as we continue. Pitching wise, you know, you look at a guy like Chris Smith who has been so steady and consistent for you all season long. He kept delivering time after time. But then I look at a guy like Daniel McCutcheon who started the season in the bullpen, gets moved back to the starting rotation. And Skip, he was absolutely uh, tremendous for you in the majority of the starts he pitched. And really, those two guys were a great one-two punch. And then you get to add in guys like Robbie Erlin after that, vets like Jason Lane, and that bullpen was just so good all season. The bullpen's been dynamic for us. Um, and Kutch, Kutch has turned into our, our ace. He obviously, he's going game one, and uh, he has been fantastic. Uh, 
uh, since I've been here uh, in mid June. He's been he's been great. He takes the ball. He's he's tough on the mound. Uh, he has been our go to guy, and then you know, then Chris Smith right behind him. Both those guys are you know in the top five in, in uh, pitching and ERA, and and Smitty's up there in strikeouts, uh, and, and and they've they've been the rock. And then but you know our whole and Erlen, you know Robbie is really getting better and better as as evidence of his you know complete game shutout his last outing and. Uh, and in our bullpen, I mean, it, the pieces have changed again. You know, you know, we've had a m- multiple guys out there, but uh, I have no fear of going to the bullpen. And uh, they, they, we've got some power arms down there, and uh, they, they keep coming at you. And, and you, we got strikeout capabilities down there, which is huge. Um, and and they're, they're ready for the task. You touched on it earlier, but I want to have you elaborate a little bit more on, as manager, you obviously make out the lineup card, you handle the the uh, in-game position changes, but as far as your involvement with this team, I would assume that from when you arrive at the clubhouse to when you leave late at night, um, a lot of this is dealing with guys, uh, especially uh, the mental aspect. You mentioned asking players what kind of mindset are they in when they arrive here and, and how they are. and uh, That's got to be tough, too, keeping every player positive because when you fill out a lineup card, there's only nine guys that get to play to start a game. And there is a lot of players, I'm sure, that would love to uh, have their name penciled in every single time out. So, Jamie, talk a little bit about that also and, and how you try to keep guys positive when you have to shuffle things up a little bit. Well, that's probably the hardest part of the day is uh, making out a lineup because you know that uh, somebody's going to be – somebody or some people are going to be disappointed. And uh, and I try to tell them um, – not try to, I do tell them that uh, – uh, when I sit down in, at the desk or in my hotel room or wherever it is, you know, I'm constantly making out lineup. Never once have I ever put down nine names to lose a game. It's always what I believe on that given day is the best nine guys to play to win a game. And, uh, and I just try to let them understand that, you know, it doesn't mean uh, tomorrow won't be your day. And it doesn't mean the next day won't be, you know, two days from now, but, Today, this is what I came up with, and I didn't just flip a coin. I put my, you know, there's a, there's a rhyme and a reason for everything, and I let them know, you know, if, if they ask, and sometimes I let them know even if they don't ask because I want them to know um, uh, why I chose this lineup. So uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's I, I, I really deal in the mental aspect of the game. I've been around it a long, long time. Uh, there's a lot of guys that have the same physical tools that get to the major leagues, and some guys have the same physical tools and don't get to the major leagues. So, what do I, you know, what's missing? It's usually some mental balance. It's usually some mental toughness. It's usually something that uh, the focus on the day in and day out, every pitch, every day, every single, every single outing. So, uh, I'm big on that. Go ahead. I try to get that across to them. Chihuahua's manager, Jamie Cork, with us right now on our Village Inn hotline as we continue. So you win on Sunday, and you know at that point that you could still be tied going into the final day of the season. You could also have the division outright, depending on what happens in that Vegas-Tacoma game. How surreal is it where essentially you're in a clubhouse, you have to play the waiting game, and for about 45 minutes, listen uh, to the Vegas uh, broadcast before you know it's time to pop open the uh, champagne and celebrate? Well, uh, first of all, winning the game was great, so, you know, but Sitting around, I really, you know, I saw the guys watching them, the look on their face that they had won that game and they're just waiting and we knew Vegas was losing and we had it on, on the radio, on the computer. And I was really hoping just because if, if we can just get this thing over with because they, they had worked so hard and I knew that they were ready to celebrate. And if Vegas had come back and won, I could just really sense this was not going to be good, if you know what I mean. Uh, they, they wanted it over with now. And uh, 
I, I think we would have responded fine and come back, and we would have won yesterday's game. Don't get that done. But uh, it was it was fun watching it transpire. How we had already won. Guys were sitting around relaxing, uh, staring at the champagne. Are we going to get to open this or not to open this? And if not, we got to turn around and mentally, here we go mentally again, mentally get ready to play the next day. But uh, it all worked out. Uh, Vegas lost, we won, and uh, it was fun to, to watch it. I, I don't care if it's Little League or Major League. Uh, winning is always important, and uh, it's fun to watch a group of guys uh, celebrate uh, what they had just accomplished. I saw a great picture of you um, in that clubhouse celebration where you were holding a champagne bottle. It looked like you had already been drenched, but you were right there in the middle of the clubhouse uh, in, in the middle of, uh, of a speech to the guys. Do you remember really what you told them? Was it pretty much the same thing that you just reiterated to us? Yes, it was. Uh, I just congratulated them and, <laughs> and let them know that uh, the things that we talk about, the daily grind, the hard work pays off. And uh, the things that we had just accomplished, uh, let's, you know, I toasted them. And, uh, and th- those are the things that, uh, that you play this game for. So it was just, a, it was just a, let's get together, a, you know, toast to what we just accomplished and the hard work that everybody put in and, and recognize it and enjoy it. Now you get the opportunity to take on Fresno, who won the Pacific North Division of the Pacific Coast League and had one of the great winning streaks we've ever seen, where they seemed like they were never losing in the month of August. Uh, Yet I look at this team and I look at this series, and it it matches up in a really interesting way because they're, they're like you in the sense that they've got some great offensive weapons that have been with them most of the season. They've got some very good starting pitching. And uh, you've seen this team a total of 16 games this year. I know some of those uh, you weren't uh, with the Chihuahuas at that time, but you've matched up with them a lot this season, and that's got to uh, bode well for you. Yeah, uh I've seen them eight times. We've been here in Fresno once before, and we saw them at our place for four since I've been here. Uh, I think we match up well. Um, we, the, you know, we came in here the last time, and they beat us the first two, and then we swept it, and we got rained out, and then we swept them in a doubleheader and moved on. So uh, I, I, I feel real good. Uh, they've got a bunch of right-handed hitters that our right-handed pitchers match up against well. Uh, they 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 have some speed, you know, a little more speed than we have, and I'm sure that they'll they'll test us on the bases. They're, they're gonna they'll they'll run when they can. Um, but uh, uh, I, I'm I'm I think we match up like you said. I think we match up extremely well with our with our starting pitching with with McCutcheon and Smith game one and two and in our, our power bullpen. Uh, I think we'll hold them in check, and and I'm really looking forward to it. You've played so well on the road all season long, and I know that uh, we've talked about in the past uh, trying to duplicate that success at home, but you could probably imagine what the atmosphere is going to be like here beginning Friday night when you come home for Game 3 of this series. And if there's one advantage for Chihuahuas fans this year, um, you get the opportunity to play as many as three games in these first two series at home. You finish out the series, and uh, the environment's going to be absolutely electric. I was at the ticket office earlier today. Fans were, as you might expect, buying what's left of the uh, tickets for the uh, playoff round. And uh, I think uh, Southwest University University Park is just going to be uh, rocking like you've never heard beginning Friday. Well, I, uh, we expect that because it has been all year. I mean, the, the fans are, are outstanding. I mean, um, I remember my first game back in June. I mean, it was a, just a mid, mid-season June game, and the place was rocking. So uh, uh, we, we expect that. Uh, uh, the fans there show up every game, and and it's it's going to be fun. There's nothing like uh, it's going to be fun, but it's going to be different because there's nothing like the playoffs. You know, you're, you're there, and it's, it's you know, a couple teams, four teams are only left playing, and we're one of them, and everybody knows it, and the town is ready, and the, and the city's going to be rocking, and and I guarantee you that the, the players are 
this is what uh, they're looking forward to. I mean, we'll hopefully take care of business here in Fresno and uh, and come home to a packed house and, and a loud house and uh, and go do our thing. We've got all the action for you, folks. Tim Haggerty calling every Chihuahua's uh, playoff game beginning tomorrow, 8 o'clock from Fresno, and then uh, right back here uh, beginning uh, Friday for Game 3 from Southwest University Park. Well, listen, enjoy uh, what's left of uh, your day off today, uh, Skip, and I'll look forward to uh, to seeing you later in the week. And uh, once again, congratulations. I hope it's the first of uh, what's going to be a magical run for the uh, Chihuahuas this season. Thank you. Go Chihuahuas. Jamie Quirk with us here on Sports Talk as we continue. We'll take a break, come back, get to more of your phone calls. Stay with us. Back with more right after this.